Hey everyone, I'm Luke from WeldPro, and today I'm here to teach you about the basics of selecting a welding process for your particular application. Sometimes when you're first starting out, deciding what welding process is best for you can be a little difficult. Many of the welders on the market today are multi-process welders that are capable of doing multiple processes like MIG, TIG, and stick all in one unit. While many of these machines run multiple processes, they are going to specialize in one process versus another. As an example, you might be trying to decide between the Weld Pro MIG 210 LCD or the TIG 200, and you're not exactly sure which one to get. In this situation, if MIG is going to be your primary welding process, then the MIG 210 LCD might be the better choice. However, if you tell me that you're going to primarily be welding with TIG and wanting to weld aluminum with TIG, I would tell you that the TIG 200 might be the better option. Now, before we get too crazy, let's take it back to the basics and help you decide which welding process is appropriate for which application. One of the first things I like to do when deciding what welding process I'm going to use is assess the thickness and the condition of the base material that I'm going to be welding. Certain welding processes are much better for thinner materials, as well as others that are better for thicker materials. Similarly, there are welding processes that are better for dirty steel, and some that are stronger on clean steel. Alternately, you might not be welding on steel at all, and so you may need to choose a welding process that's appropriate for the type of base metal you're welding, whether it be aluminum or stainless. When assessing the thickness and the condition of the base material, I'll usually make a general assessment and decide what type of welding and process I'm going to use. Looking at my main choices, I can choose from stick, flux core, MIG, or TIG. So let's start with why we may or may not choose the TIG process to repair a thin snowplow. The thinner material that exists on a snowplow or on a backblade type application might be great for the TIG process in theory, but there are a couple underlying issues that might exist. One of the main considerations to take into account when choosing the TIG process is the speed of which you can travel. If you have a lengthy weld, typically I say anything over 8 to 10 inches, this can often be done with the MIG process to make things a little faster than the TIG process. Secondarily, one of the things that comes to mind about TIG is the necessity for your base material to be very, very clean when TIG welding. It's likely that unless you're putting in all brand new steel, this snowplow or this backblade application is going to have some embedded dirt and corrosion in the base material, making the TIG process a little bit unsuitable for this. Typically, when you encounter dirty or scaly base material with the TIG process, the art can tend to pop and contaminate the tungsten. It's for these reasons combined that we'll probably go ahead and say the TIG process is better suited for a shorter length of weld application as well as some cleaner base material. Let's take a look at how the stick or SMAW application might fit into this. One of the first things I think of is that stick electrodes are inherently good at removing contaminants from base material. This makes many stick electrodes perfect candidates for running on pitted, corroded, or rusty base material. Stick electrodes can also be great for lengthy welds. Because of the length of your electrode, usually you get quite a bit of travel and deposition out of one electrode before needing to change it out. The one problem that I do have with selecting the SMAW process for an application like this is that the stick electrodes inherently have a great deal of penetration. There are some ways to get around this, including running electrodes on AC, but ultimately I think we're leading ourselves down the road to the correct choice of this process being either MIG or flux core. The reason we might want to choose MIG or flux core for this process is because we have an unlimited amount of control over our wire, our penetration, and our deposition. If we have a lengthy weld, we can usually cover that in a pretty quick amount of time because of our continuous spool of wire. Ultimately, it would probably come down to deciding between whether to use MIG wire or flux core wire. And at that point, I would make the decision based on your ability to clean your weld zone. MIG wire has a silicone in it that can remove contaminants from the weld. However, it is limited to mild contaminants. The flux cord wire has a flux powder inside similar to a stick electrode. This flux powder inside of the wire makes flux core's ability to remove contaminants much better than the MIG process. 
I think if you were putting in some new steel and you could get your joint prepared really well and clean, the MIG process is an excellent choice. If you have an older snowplow or back blade where maybe you can't get the pitted rust out of it or there's always going to be some paint where you're welding, the flux cord process may be more suitable. Now let's take this in contrast to a very different application. Let's say we needed to weld something like a little thicker aluminum. Perhaps we had a garden gate that was damaged and we needed to make a repair on it. For the sake of this video, we're going to say that the repair is very small and it's just a round bar. While there are aluminum stick electrodes that you can use, we typically don't prefer doing that as the weld quality can be low and typically there are lots of contaminants. So we're going to rule out the SMAW process for the aluminum immediately. Next, let's take a look at the MIG flux core processes. Flux core is never really ideal for aluminum, but the MIG process can be when a spool gun is used attached to the MIG welder with an aluminum wire. The problem with running aluminum spool gun on MIG in an application like this is that the MIG spool gun can be very high deposition and you do need to travel relatively quickly. For an application like our garden fence, we would have to move way too quickly to achieve a high quality, precise weld around that baluster. It's for these reasons that we'll probably choose the TIG process in an application like this. The TIG torch is easy to manipulate, it's easy to get into small areas, and it's very precise, leaving you with a weld that is often aesthetically pleasing. Typically with the TIG process, there's very low need for cleanup. There might be a little contamination or oxide on the aluminum that needs brushed off, but overall there's no slag to remove and typically no excess filler material that will need ground off. When selecting any welding process for any given situation, your main consideration should be what is your base material? What is the cleanliness of your base material? How thick is the base material and how strong does your weld need to be? How much penetration will you require? Will you wind up burning through the weld or will you not get enough penetration and have a weak weld? Wind can also be a major consideration. If you're welding outside, the SMAW process provides a thick shielding cloud that's able to shield the weld from atmospheric contaminants. The MIG and TIG processes often leave you with a shielding gas that's easily blown away by the wind and can contaminate your weld very rapidly. For this reason, the SMAW process is often best suited for outdoor windy applications. While basic at its core, hopefully this video has given you a little more insight into choosing a welding process based on your specific needs. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to leave those below and we'll get back to you. You can also reach out to our friendly customer service team that's available 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. seven days a week. Thanks again for tuning in. And from all of us here at WeldPro, we can't wait to see what you build with your brand new WeldPro machine. Yeah.